My name is Frank Mazzella. I'm the Learning Products Manager for Vision Research. I'm here to present a series of PCC Phantom Camera Control Software Tutorials intended to show you many of the various features and processes incorporated in PCC. In this Synchronizing Multiple Network Cameras Part 2 tutorial, you will learn how to synchronize multiple phantom cameras using a variety of framing clock sources. Every phantom camera requires a clock source, referred to as a framing clock, that instructs it when to capture the image data seen by the sensor. In networking environments, a single clock source guarantees all the cameras capture their image data at the same moment in time. Phantom cameras can be clocked several different ways. Depending on the method used to clock the cameras, up to 63 cameras can be networked together. Unfortunately, I don't have an external clocking device or an iRig receiver here to demonstrate the next couple of synchronization options that could be used to synchronize up to 63 cameras. However, I will still show you the cabling scheme and camera setup options just as I did in part one of this tutorial. The external clock synchronization option from a cabling scheme perspective is very similar to the internal oscillator providing an external clock cabling scheme. As you can see, the external clock source, in this example the oscilloscope, is providing the framing clock pulse to the cameras via their F-Sync connectors. Whereas the iRig B clock synchronization cabling scheme provides its clock pulse from an iRig B receiver to the cameras via their iRig in or time code in connectors. We'll talk a bit more about the receiver in a few minutes. With either option, it's more likely that the clock pulses are provided to the camera in parallel opposed to the serial cabling scheme shown. And the following rules apply. A hard trigger must be used to trigger the cameras. All cameras must be set to the same sample rate or recording speed of the external clock source or iRig B clock source. If there is an independent F-Sync connector on the rear panel of the camera, then all the cameras can be set to an equal value of the master camera settings. If the camera requires a breakout box or capture cable to use F-Sync, the frame delay must be set to a minimum of one microseconds greater than the master camera setting. And Vision Research recommends that all cameras be set to the same post-trigger value, thereby instructing each camera to record the same number of images from the trigger point to the end of the recording. So let's configure the cameras to synchronize to an external clock source first. Just as I did before, I'll lock all the cameras together. Then I'll open the advanced settings selector and scroll down to the external sync options and select external from the sync imaging pull down selection list. You may have noticed that the preview panels no longer display a live image of the LEDs moving. The reason this happens is because I don't have an external clock source and the camera does not have a fallback clock option when set to external timed. But let's move on as if it were timed externally. Since the external clock source is not another camera, I'll enter zero in the master camera serial field. And since I don't want add a frame delay, described in part one of this tutorial, and my camera has an F-Sync BNC connector on the rear panel of the camera, I'm going to set it to zero also. So that's how you configure your cameras to be clocked from an external clock source. If an iRig B receiver is used to provide the clock pulse to the cameras, we simply need to select Lock to iRig from the Sync Imaging pull-down selector for all the cameras. Notice when I select this option, the camera still provides a live image. Let me explain why if you don't already know. Since the iRig receiver obtains its iRig B formatted signal from the satellites, it's possible that atmospheric conditions or loss of satellite positioning could interrupt its reception, which in turn could cause the clock pulse to be lost. If this were to occur, the camera would fall back to its internal oscillator clock until the iRig B signal is reacquired. This is why the cameras are providing us with live images even though they're not connected to an iRig receiver. 
The cameras have the ability to auto-detect if the signal provided from the receiver is an unmodulated or modulated signal that can withstand up to plus or minus 15 volts with an input of 1.5 volts so it is compatible with TTL levels. And presently there are approximately 27 different frame rates supported. These frame rates can be found in the PCC help file under the functional description module in the frame rate table topic provided with your PCC software. So that's how you configure your cameras to be clocked with an IRIG B formatted signal clock source. Okay, the last clocking method is the lock to video option. With this method, the camera captures frames at a frame rate that is a multiple of the video frame rate with a defined phase relationship to the video signal. This mode brings the following benefits. When both recording and playback needs to be synchronized, such as in stereoscopic applications, an F-Sync connection between cameras is no longer needed. Genlock will suffice. The cameras can capture at the fractional frame rates of 23.98, 29.97, and their multiples. The live output of the camera maintains a stable phase in relationship to the frame capture. When locked to video is selected, the capture of frames is triggered by the F-Sync pulses generated by the video raster generator. The first F-Sync pulse of the video frame coincides with the start of the vertical sync, and further pulses are spread through the frame at equal intervals in order to obtain the desired frame rate. When in sync to video mode, the camera will only accept frame rates that are a multiple of the video frame rate. If other values are requested, they will be rounded to the nearest multiple. For the purpose of this calculation and setting, rounded frame rates are used. For example, 24, 25, 30, 50, or 60 frames per second. Even when the camera is set to a fractional rate such as 29.98 or 29.97 frames per second. However, when the frame sync pulses are generated, the real, possibly fractional frame rate is used. For example, if the camera is set to 1080 PSF 23.98 and a frame rate of 100 frames per second is requested, the camera will round the 100 frames per second to 96, the nearest multiple of 24. The true frame rate of the camera will be 95.904 frames per second, four times 23.976 frames per second. So that concludes the synchronizing multiple network cameras tutorial, where you learned how to network and synchronize phantom cameras using the internal oscillator to network up to 63 standalone cameras, the internal oscillator to generate an IRIG B or external pulse to synchronize up to four cameras maximum, an external or IRIG B source to synchronize up to 63 cameras, and how cameras can be locked to a video signal, and the rules to properly synchronize them. For in-depth Phantom Operations, Vision Research offers Phantom Operations certification training. Please visit our training webpage at www.phantomhighspeed.com Service Support Training or contact your local sales representative who can be found on our website under the Contact Us pull-down selection list for more information about our training sessions or for Phantom Cameras in general.